What's up, Gator Nation? Welcome to another Rapid Reaction. Zach Albaverde and Nick Del Torre coming to you live from the Heavener facility. We are actually inside the barbershop, uh, the Dr. D. Gilmore family, Gator Style and Salon, to be specific. Uh, we just heard from Billy Napier following Florida's first scrimmage on Thursday. Uh, got some updates, unfortunately, on Justice Boone, but also on where things stand with the quarterback position and how the first scrimmage played out in the swamp. Uh, Nick, how are you doing, my friend? Doing well, doing well. I, uh, uh, unfortunate news about Justice Boom. I don't think there's any surprise yeah. uh, with the quarterback situation. And uh, now I think Florida's kind of recruited to be able to fill in for Justice Boom. So we'll dig into that uh, at the end. We will. I think we all came here today expecting, anticipating that a starter was going to be named. And uh, Billy gave us the old, not so fast. <laughs> um, as we heard from him, he's seen enough. To name a starter, it's simply a matter of uh, he wants to tell the team first, wants to tell the players before he tells the media. I think by the time that you guys are watching this video, that news might be out there. Uh, that, we, that news will be out there. Yes. They're going to name a quarterback. He just hadn't had a chance to meet uh, with the quarterbacks or with the team. Uh, and you don't want to have uh, your other quarterbacks or your team find out who their starter is going to be uh, by Zach Oliver's tweet. No, no, you don't. Um, so, but that's where things stand. Nick had a story ready to go. We both have been saying for weeks that we expected it to be, to be grand. We went back during to the off season. Uh, and, and again, it's not that he was just handed this job. He had to earn it. He's played well throughout camp. And I think from what we heard in the scrimmage, Nick, uh, he had a great showing. He you know, didn't have a lot of huge deep shots or anything like that. A lot of short and intermediate passes, but he was very effective with them, very accurate with them, and most importantly, he moved the ball. He moved the starting offense, and I think that he's clearly um, established himself as QB Warren. Yeah, I think I got some people riled up on Twitter last night saying he's not Danny Warfel, he's not Kyle Trask, he's not going to ask to be that. Yeah. He's not going to throw the ball 45, 50 times a game. Uh, I think what they need Grant. What they needed to see from Grant was for him to get familiar with the playbook. Can you mm -hmm. get us out of a bad play, get us into a good one? If you see and diagnose a defense, can you check down and, and get the ball to a running back? Can, yeah. can you take time to do things like that? So I think Graham Mertz makes quick decisions. Um, I think he's been, been accurate with those short and intermediate passes where we didn't really have uh, a, a ton of success. Florida didn't have a ton of success there last year. Um, so I think it, it was just a matter of time before uh, you know, these cards kind of played. Yeah, and I think also we you know wanted to see where things would stand with the starting defense, trying to build off of their performance from the spring game. Before we get to how they look, one of those starters for a loss, unfortunately, in the scrimmage, uh, Justice Boone, Billy Napier announced today, tore his ACL and will be out for the season. He's going to have surgery in about two weeks. and. Nick, injuries are part of the game. We've covered several camps where guys have gone down, guys have gone down with this injury. I think that this one really hit Billy home. Mm -hmm. um, he seemed very uh, shaken up having to talk to us about justice, and I think it speaks to how much he means to this program mm -hmm. and the staff. And you never want to see a guy get injured, but a guy of, of, of his level and how much leadership that he provides in that locker room, I think it really – took a toll on that locker room. Yeah, I mean, he was a young player last year, um, but someone that everyone looked to. And I think Justice Boone holds players accountable, um, not just to the team and to him, but to themselves. Uh, and he isn't going to let guys slack. Um, he's, he's a leader. So you not only lost a guy who I think would have, you know, played that strong side defensive end and backed up Prince Lee with Miel and at, at Jack, but uh, a guy who is a, a, a loud voice and a leader in your locker room. So it's a big loss. And, and he'll still be able to be around, but... Um, be a leader that way. Yeah, but he, um, you know, had worked worked his tail off to kind of put himself in a position to make plays on the field and yeah. impact the team that way. And, uh, you know, just like that, it's a game of football. It's taken away from him. Yeah, we just met with him last week. Great interview. He was recently named the Gatorade Man of the Month, so uh, he's been doing all the things right leading up to the season. You just hate to see this. Um, Billy did say that there's going to be a lot of guys, it sounds like, that will get an opportunity to step up at that edge spot, a uh, really defensive end. Uh, with Boone being out, I think the first two that are going to get the opportunity is the true freshman, Kelby Collins and Cameron James. Those were the first two guys that he mentioned. Jack Pyburn, who's been playing 
kind of like that outside linebacker role uh, behind Princely. He can also slide over and play end. And he had multiple sacks in the scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, and then he even floated out the idea of Tyreek Sapp or even Caleb Banks playing some defensive end and, and you know sliding outside from the defensive tackle spot. So they got some options there. They just got to figure out what makes the most sense to get the best guys on the field. Yeah, when you talk about Sapp and Banks, they were probably talking, you know, in, in clear running situations. <laughs> you know, when you're running, it's a little bit more of a jumbo package. That was a big one um, when the news kind of came out that he was hurt yesterday. Fans are like, oh, great, Tyreek Sapp will just slide over there. I'm like, well, he, that easy. he's gained 45 pounds since he showed up on campus to specifically to play defensive tackle. Yeah. Uh, it's a different position. We're not playing that. You can't just move guys around like that. And he's been repping there exclusively. Exclusively. For, uh, I mean, since the, since the middle, middle of last season, yeah. he's been exclusively repping at defensive tackle. Tyreek Sapp is someone we don't talk about enough. No. I think he's going to make an impact. I just don't think um, – what he's done to, to his body to, to start playing and to get on the field this year at defensive tackle lends itself to playing over there. People are like, well, so, well so-and-so is only 260, and he can do it. Like, not every 260 is, is the same. <laughs> they, they look different. Um, Sapp is fast for his size, but he's not the kid who showed up at 240 pounds, um, no. 235 pounds uh, as an edge rusher from the St. Thomas Coins. That's right. That's right. Um... So we'll we'll see. I, I think Kelvin Collins is probably the guy that's gonna you know really have to step up, and he had already kind of established himself as Boone's backup. So um, he did not scrimmage yesterday, though. A lot of guys out on the defensive side, um, and yet the starting defense, from what we report at Gators Online, they they dominate, mm -hmm. um, especially during the second half of the scrimmage. They really came on strong, and they were going against the the backup offense. Um, led by Jack Miller, so there was an advantage, I think, from a talent standpoint with the starting defense, but they played like that. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really didn't give up much. I know Jalen Kimber made some plays uh, in the secondary, had a couple pass breakups. Uh, I heard some really good things about Jordan Castell at the safety spot. Nick, he continues to push for playing time. I think we're going to see him in that safety rotation. Yeah, I think the safeties, uh, when Billy talked about, you know, uh, some of the guys not making tackles in space, I think the safeties, um, I've had I watched Miguel Mitchell get run over. I watched Kamari Wilson get run over. Uh, I watched uh, RJ Moten not be able to cover speedy receivers. So safety is a position group where I, I thought you'd be okay. And then as I watched fall camp, I'm like, okay, that's the spot that I think you're weakest at now. Um, He's seen, and Billy has said that and tied in or what yeah. concerned him the most. And, and Jordan Castell is is quickly taking advantage of what might be a weak running back or a weak safety room. Yeah. Um, and it certainly was weak just depth wise because uh, Jamarcus Weston, uh, you know, in his fourth year at Florida is now uh, moving from wide receiver to safety. Uh, so you obviously need the depth there. So I would not be surprised if at some point Jordan Castell is getting a start or a couple starts at this point, uh, in this season. Yeah, and, you know, I think across the board we've seen or expected that freshmen were going to have an impact. I think we're starting to see that show up a lot. Um, some other injury news uh, on, you know, Xander's. Uh, Leonard, uh, Billy provides some updates. Where do things stand on those guys, Nick? And I, I know Xanders was one that I think folks are waiting on where his status is. Yeah, I think uh, Billy said Dante Xanders will be back in, in seven to ten days, a lower body injury. Richie Leonard, um, I think, is back. Um, and uh, I'll be interested to see at that tight end position, what, what does Florida do there? Um, with Arliss Boardingham, who's been – Arliss Boardingham. Who's been in non-contact jersey? Jonathan Owen's been in non-contact jersey. Dante Zander has been missing practice. Yeah. Um, Isaac's been in a non-contact jersey. Scott Isaac's been in a non-contact jersey. So that Tony Livingston must be tired. <laughs> Doing a lot of running. Um, that's a position with a lot of guys and not a lot of proving anything. Yeah. In in the room, so there's it's ripe for somebody to come in and and, uh, and make an impact there. Uh, the biggest ones for me, and, I, and I've written about this at Gators Online, is that. The, the offensive line. I don't know that you have the depth, and Billy started talking yeah, about did. having the depth at, at offensive line. He's naming guys, says, we feel comfortable with Jake Slaughter. I don't know if I do. Um, he says, you know, but he starts naming guys, and now we're thin inside, and uh, well, we're trying to find a third offensive tackle. You just got Lindell Hudson back to practice, but he's in a non-contact yeah. and not participating. Um, you're, you're talking about Jalen Farmer and, and Cam Waits. Cam Waits was just getting him back to practice eight months after tearing his Achilles, uh, that's a feat. 
uh, but I don't know that he's ready or even close to ready to start going through, um, you know, drills and, and getting pushed around by, by some defensive linemen. Yeah, it's uh, they're they're too deep on the offensive line. Is something that's that we're going to continue to monitor. I think the starters are pretty much set, yeah. um, but trying to have that depth and, and get to try to get to nine or ten linemen that you feel good about instead of just the seven at eight that Rob right. told yeah, you. I think we're about seven right now. <laughs> I think Flores are like seven healthy. Um, and then just overall for the scrimmage on Thursday, uh, another touchdown for Aiden Mizell. Uh, it's the second time that he showed up in the first scrimmage of a camp since he's been on campus this year. I think that he's probably, of the three freshmen, maybe the guy will, that might have the least amount of production of the three. But I think is going to get loose on some go-rounds yeah. this year, man. I mean, he's, he's just made too many plays in practice and has the speed that I think he's going to see the field in some capacity. He might, might have the most yards with the least amount of catches. Yes. <laughs> the His freshmen. yards per catch is going to be up there. Yeah. Uh, Montreal Do Johnson had a long touchdown run, um, as we would expect. We got to hear from Trevor Etienne today, and he says the nickname is TNT that uh, that they like. Um, some dynamite that they're trying to have in that backfield. So, um, and then lastly, um, I think what was probably encouraging to hear was just the overall execution. Uh, from what we were told, Nick, it was it was a cleaner scrimmage. Not a lot of penalties, and the penalties that were called were effort plays. There were a couple false starts, but the offensive line, which was a mess in the spring game, um, looked a lot better in the scrimmage, which you would expect with uh, Mazuka and, and uh, Iguaka being in the lineup. Yeah, they, Florida's, there's, I don't think they're going to hide it. They might be trying to hide it, but there's no, there's no hiding what their strength is. When you look at that running back room, mm -hmm. uh, we've spoken to two of them now, and then you have Cam Carroll and Trent Webb as well. Um, that offensive line has to uh, play to the level to allow these running backs to, to kind of carry the team. That's the offensive line and the running backs are going to be the motor that carries Florida. And if Florida can't run the football, they're in, they're in trouble this year. Yeah, that's what we expect to be their, their bread and butter. And, um, you know, that's going to start with Montreal and Trevor. Uh, but, you know, they got a bevy of backs there. Uh, they're, they're really liking Cam Carroll, too. So um, we're going to continue to monitor uh, how this offense and what it's going to look like. But one thing that we do expect is Graham Mertz to be leading it again. Uh, no starter named at the press conference Friday, but before this day is over, uh, that announcement will probably be coming at Gators Online. So make sure that you guys stay locked to all of our coverage. We are one week through fall training camp. Nick and I have a day off tomorrow. Uh, get to enjoy a little time off Saturday, and then we get right back on the grind Sunday. Uh, football season is right around the corner, Nick. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go to Utah. Under three weeks, yeah. Under three weeks, that's right. Um, so we'll definitely keep uh, covering it all at Gators Online. Make sure you guys stay locked to the website. For Nick Del Torre, I'm Zach Albuquerque.